Okay, so this experiment's going to demonstrate the capturing of atmospheric electricity. And this is a small electrostatic motor, and I came across this motor in the book uh, Homemade Lightning, and it showed a motor design from 1924, uh, Popular Electrics. And it looks so simple, and I thought, could it really be that simple, folks? Uh, so I decided to do a test, and uh, what I've got here is I've got this side will come over here to this 28-gauge uh, copper wire. I'm going to run that up in the air in the hexacopter. And this side over here is grounded. And I'll provide links at laserhacker.com and in the description of this video uh, so you can learn about this. Go to Wikipedia and read up on atmospheric electricity. There's more to it than first meets the eye. It's not just from the wind creating a static effect on the wire. This is really quite the effect. And uh, there's been some patents uh, in the past from Germans and others claiming, uh, you know, up to a thousand watts of useful power. And uh, I really want to get into researching some of this. Now, there's obvious dangers involved in this kind of thing. Anytime you run up a, uh, a copper wire into the sky, you've got a Benjamin Franklin type situation going on. So there's obvious uh, dangers and uh, all the precautions and proper training should be uh, utilized in doing an experiment like this. Okay, so we've got the hexacopter up there in the air, and it's only up in the air about 100 feet. And uh, coming down here to the uh, atmospheric electricity motor, you can see that it's rotating. All right, so that's the uh, motor, just as printed in Popular Electrics from 1924. And it said this contrivance would amuse the young electrician. And I'm telling you, it's doing its job, folks. I am uh, more than amused by this. And... Uh, it actually is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, so... Very, very cool. So, very simple. We've got one side grounded on the copper rod. We've got the uh, little electrostatic motor, and this side going up about 100 feet to the uh, hexacopter. Okay, I want to give a quick book review on three books that I picked up from Amazon. You can buy these three books in a set uh, for $50. The first book is Electrostatic Motors by Oleg Jefeminko. Now I've read some of this guy's work scattered around the internet, but I went ahead and bought the book so I could get all of the work in one place, and I'm really glad I did. This is a tre treasure trove of information on electrostatic motors as well as atmospheric electricity. You can see there's a lot of cool diagrams, a lot of uh, cool drawings, motors. Uh, this motor here generated uh, 0.1 horsepower, which for electrostatic motor is actually quite a lot of power. And he goes on to hear that to say that this motor operates from a 6,000 6, volt power supply as well as from an earth field antenna. Um, on the next page, he shows this uh, little motor here that they were able to operate from a 20 foot pole. It said they tried to do it in front of the uh, physics building, West Virginia University, and in front of the building it would not run there, but out in the parking lot it ran very well. So to run a motor like that on a 20-foot pole is uh, really quite the accomplishment. Um, I, let me just go ahead and flip through some of this book. You can see that it's just got just pretty much every electrostatic motor ever created documented in this book. And uh, toward the end, he goes into some more information on atmospheric electricity. You can see the antenna here and the motor and the ground. Very interesting stuff. Um, there's even a section in the back on how to build your own uh, motors. Here. And I think this is some uh, excerpts out of a popular science or popular mechanics. But uh, just really interesting information. I'll just share a couple of things here from the, the very back. He has a section on the Earth's electric field. And he says here the near ground or the fair weather electric field is on average 120 volts per meter. This means that if one erects a 10 meter high Earth field antenna, one attains a voltage of 1200 volts between the tip of the antenna and the ground. Very fascinating stuff. So that's the first book. Okay, so I just want to show you A.D. Moore's Electrostatics. Uh, this is the second book in this set. I've yet to read this book, but this book is a treasure trove of information. Very thorough, very well documented, all in high voltage electrostatics. Now the third one that I've been having a lot of fun going over is this book called Homemade Lightning by A.R.A. Ford. This book is 
full of cool stuff. And this book actually had the diagram that I wanted to build up on this uh, very simple static motor with the aerial antenna that you just saw in the video. But this book has a lot of interesting stuff and I was really surprised to see that it has a section in it that possibly could have connections to the Capanandes devices and some stuff I'd like to try with the drill ringer crossover circuit um, between grounding and picking up earth currents. So these three books make a treasure trove of information on electrostatics, high voltage, um, atmospheric electricity, etc. So just wanted to share that with you all. It's a great uh, resource uh, for information. Now I want to show you where some of this uh, information, some of this technology could go. Okay, so if you're wondering why I'm excited about this really small um, electrostatic motor, let me just show you that there could be a whole lot more to this uh, aerial electricity than first meets the eye. This is a really cool website. It's rexresearch.com and I've done a lot of reading at this website over the years and he's got a lot of information compiled here on atmospheric electricity and uh, he's broken down by different uh, inventors and their work etc and uh, just wanted to share that website. I'll put links to this website and some of the relevant articles at laserhacker.com so check this uh, video description for links to all that stuff. But um, here he's got, uh, the, just, just this one section is a great example of the quality information you can get here at his website. This is from Science and Invention, February 1922. And it's some information on what they were doing in Germany with aerial antennas and balloons. And the part that I just wanted to share here is that, where it says the amount of electrical power that resides in the atmosphere is outstanding. Uh, these guys went out and they sent up a single balloon to 300 yards and they got a constant current, 400 volts at 1.8 amps. Folks, that's a lot of energy. It says, by using two balloons in connection with a special condenser battery, the power obtained was 81 kilowatts in 24 hours. The actual current delivered was 6.8 amps at 500 volts. So we're talking about some serious amounts of uh, energy and uh, very, very fascinating. So I will just go and uh, show a few other spots, a few other things from this website that are interesting. Okay, so if you do check out this website, be sure to read the story about Roy J. Myers. Uh, in 1912, this guy invented some uh, antenna aerial atmospheric electricity receiving equipment. And there's, I read this uh, a couple years ago, and I was just amazed. I've always wanted to try to replicate it and uh, figure out what this guy was doing. But you got access here to all the patents and everything, so definitely check, check his work out. Very, very interesting. This guy was a prisoner. And he really invented all this stuff while he was in prison. So really interesting, fascinating story. Definitely check him out. Okay, there's also this. And you can see here on the antenna that this is a bunch of thin wire spikes. And it's probably to help the corona dis discharge. But this one, uh, it says the apparatus in the photo produced 300 watts with a collector 2 meters tall. So a lot of times, folks, it's good to go back, look at what's been done before, and uh, replicate that stuff. Because if I could get 300 watts with a two meter tall uh, antenna, that would just be phenomenal. And whether or not I get there, it's a lot of fun uh, experimenting and learning. You sure learn a lot. So check out the links I'm gonna include at laserhacker.com. I'll put links to Rex research and to the appropriate articles that you see here. Very fascinating stuff. And of course, a lot of this stuff reminds us of probably the most well known in this field. And that would be uh, Thomas uh, Henry Moray. And he, of course, he's got a lot of information here on that as well. So this could be more than just a small motor uh, rotating in a, in a plastic cup. I mean, this we could maybe tap into some serious amounts of practical uh, electricity here. And if you follow along in my videos, you know I'm very interested in uh, how to make these things practical. How can these things actually be made useful and put into use? So anyway, that's, that's what I'm up to in all this, folks. Just thought I'd share, and uh, let's all keep experimenting.